times, I think Trinity was very much an oasis um, of plurality, uh, of difference. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as this country was kind of, before it really kind of discovered its modernity, I, I suppose. Uh, Mark, your time in Trinity went one way and then changed dramatically uh, towards the end of your time here. Talk to us about your time in Trinity and then obviously the person you became afterwards. Um, yeah, well, my, my time in Trinity, uh, well, nearly didn't start. Uh, back in 94, I... Much younger, obviously. Uh, yeah, yeah, with hair, with hair as well. But uh, in, in 94, uh, I had been mainly rowing in school and not studying. And as a, as a result, I didn't uh, get the grades to get into Trinity. But uh, my dad faxed. Do we still use faxes before emails? Faxed and phoned and uh, harassed the admissions department. I got I got an interview to get in to, to Trinity. So I was on holiday in Tenerife with 20 of my friends from school when I got the call. And that was it, into Trinity. Now, it, for me, that was incredibly important because I really wanted to row and row for, for Ireland. Um, and I got straight into the front gates in, in Freshers Week, signed up to the rowing club and mainly rowed for the first year. So when I got my results whilst competing in Henry Royal Regatta in, at the end of June that year, I found out I failed three of my, uh, my first year subjects. So I, hadn't, I still hadn't got it, but you actually had to get involved in the study at some point. So passed the exams back into rowing, and in my second year I did a bit more, more studying. So first year was rowing, the second year was rowing and studying. And then at the end of my second year, I broke up with my girlfriend of three years. And both of us would say it was the best decision both of us ever made. She's now happily married. And it meant that in my third year, I could get involved in rowing, studying, and uh, 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 socialising. <laughs> uh, so the third year was, but things were in fact were getting better and better. And as I moved into fourth year, I think, I think I, uh, I think I had the whole Trinity experience cracked by that stage. So just before my finals, I uh, was out training for the colours race again against UCD, and which we were clearly going to win again, uh, and. I unfortunately, uh, and there was some blurring on the side of my vision, and came down the next day to the Boathouse and Island Bridge, and the blurring was still there, and I knew something was wrong with my sight, so I got a train up to up to Belfast, and within two weeks I was in Manchester for an operation, which I never recovered from. Now, the only light point on that was it meant that I didn't have to sit my finals, and judging by my academic career to that point, perhaps it's a good thing because I'm not sure I would have actually got my degree on merit. So Trinity thankfully gave me my degree. So I can recommend that for any student uh, out there. But I suppose I suppose what I took from, from Trinity, uh, the biggest thing that I took from Trinity was uh, confidence. And that confidence came from being involved, being involved in the rowing being involved in the socialising, being involved eventually in the, in the studying. And I think um, in the 10 years since leaving college and in the 10 years since I went blind, I think the recovery uh, has come from, from getting involved, not lying in bed, um, feeling sorry for myself with my world ending. It's been, it's been about getting out there and, and getting involved. And I think Trinity and this university gives everyone that opportunity to get involved and build confidence as a result of what we, what we get out of being involved in things. So, Mark, can you just tell the audience uh, what you've achieved uh, in, in, in terms of endurance uh, challenges you've taken on since you went blind? Well, at first, I went back to rowing, first of all. I got a silver and bronze in the Commonwealth Games for Northern Ireland. Uh, in the, you know, I don't know how, how, to, how to say it. Political correctness has taken over, you see, so I, I have to say that it was the normal Commonwealth Games, we're probably not allowed to say normal, not the non-disabled Commonwealth Games. Uh, Silver and bronze, men I did six marathons in the week in the Ruby Desert. Did the no, hang on, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, six, six marathons in a week in the Ruby Desert, carrying 
food uh, for the week on, on in packs and then I did marathons at the North Pole, Everest Base Camp, Dead Sea Ultra, kayak across the Irish Sea, uh, Ironman Triathlon, especially the most recently I've done a, a race to the South Pole for a, th a thousand kilometres in two months. So, so you're a bit of a lazy individual? Uh, yeah, <laughs> well I sort of, you know, I learned from those days of laziness in, 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 tri in Trinity, but it's a, I suppose you know, the best thing I've ever done is is going to the South Pole and it was the hardest thing I ever did, just raising the, the 100,000 to get there. It was difficult, never mind doing the race, but being involved and Chris mentioned uh, about fa failing, at least coming to the brink of failure sometimes is, is I think, healthy and good and makes it worthwhile. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. Thank you.